Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am Sam, I'm an artist, illustrator, aspiring knitting designer, a crafter, coming to you from Dublin in Ireland. You can find me all around the internet uh, looking for Irish farm art. I have an Instagram account, a Facebook, Twitter, um, what else? An Etsy shop in which I sell my original paintings and as well, of course, a Ravelry page where you can find all my designs as well. If you are a new viewer, thank you so much for coming by. Please don't forget to click on the subscribe button and like, comment, all the jazz. That will definitely help this tiny little channel to get some sort of visibility around the world. And if you are a returning viewer, here we are again. I left you last week with a Q&A, and if you haven't seen that, I'm gonna link it below, uh, in which I try to answer some of your questions, and I received so many questions that um, we may need to do another... How do you say that? Another iteration of the Q&A. Uh, anyway, thank you so much as well for all the questions that you sent over. Really blew my mind. I put a story on Instagram asking for questions, if you have any. And in half an hour I received more than 40 questions and then kept growing. I had to delete the story because how can I answer all those questions? Some of them were knitting related, some other were not knitting related, so as well I had to balance what I was doing. Anyway, why am I talking about this? This is a knitting podcast, a regular knitting podcast in which I try to talk about my finished works, works in progress and acquisitions, which we don't have any this week. Thank goodness. Last time, of course, I did the Q&A because I didn't have anything finished. But this week we have a couple of things. It's been, weirdly enough, a quieter, um, more quiet week. Quieter? More quiet? Uh, English is not my first language, if you can tell. Um, it's been a quiet... Uh, week, let's go with that, in work and uh, I had more time to knit and I stay up very late to knit. I got some sort of inspiration back as well, which is all great. Anyway, the first thing that we must address here is the jumper that I'm wearing. And I'm gonna kind of model it for you a little bit if I can. Anyway, uh, the viewfinder in the camera is awful and I don't know if you can get the picture of the stunningness of this jumper. This is um, the Moby Sweater Men version by Petit Knit. Yes, it's a second one. If you remember a few podcasts ago, now I'm just counting time in podcasts, uh, a few months ago I have knitted the same pattern, the same Moby um, a sweater, man version, in um, drops merino extra fine. Actually, let me go and grab it for you. Here it is. Uh, this was the original one, uh, knitted once again in drops merino extra fine, which is a Decay Superwash yarn by Drops, extremely, extremely good on the price side. Um, I think a ball was about uh, 2 euro or something like that, something ridiculous. This jumper is probably costing, yarn-wise, less than 25 euro craziness. Um, it's a lovely iron sort of cable, sort of jumper, sweater. It has this panel. Why am I showing this? I can show you this. It has this panel on the front chest on the back with mock cables that makes a lovely grid. Uh, and on the sides and on the sleeves we have a proper cable 
I can't go into details because of course the pattern is for sale. Um, you can find it a link below in my description as well. And we have panels of moss stitch or double moss stitch if I'm right on the underarm side of the body and uh, the entire construction of the sleeve. It's absolutely gorgeous, fits very well. Why did I need another one? Well, simply because I was uh, so baffled by this first one that I had to knit one in proper yarn. What am I talking about? This is Superwash yarn, very cheap. You know how I feel about Superwash. It's great on the skin, it doesn't itch at all and I'm wearing this jumper over and over and over and over again like it was a hoodie, a sweatshirt, I don't know how you call them, abroad. You put it in the washing machine, it comes out fine every time. It's great for house wearing type of thing when nobody sees you <laughs> and it's okay. The problem with this sweater is that uh, it drapes a lot. It became as long as a dress probably. I, use, I can use this as a top and bottom, one piece, fine. I don't think it was a problem with uh, the gauge uh, when I knit my swatch and I started knitting around this, the gauge was fine. The problem is how the yarn reacts with uh, water after washing, I don't know. I think superwash yarn is coated with some plasticky feature that avoid the yarn from felting. So when you wash it, superwash, it always come out uh, fine and not felted, but the fact that there's no grippiness in the yarn makes this very difficult to maintain the gauge. Am I making any sense? Whenever you wash it, not having any grip, the fibers just slip on each other and it becomes massive. So this is now a massive, massive sweater and is very, very elastic. So back to why did I want a new Moby sweater is because I wanted one in proper yarn and this is made out of Sunness Garn Pierre Kint. I don't have the color here but it's this lovely dark olive grey. I think the cover is quite accurate today, funny enough. Sunness Garn Pierre Kint is still on the cheapish side. We're talking about 5 euro a bowl and they come in 50 gram bowl for 9 one meters if I'm right <laughs> and I'm going by memory here. Once again it's not super easy to find in Ireland but I know that probably like less than one percent of the viewers here are from Ireland so you may be able to find it quite easily. If you are from Ireland or from a European country that doesn't really have sunless garn. I found a fantastic website from France that um, have lovely prices and ships um, all around Europe. I'm not sure abroad, outside Europe, but you may check. I'm gonna put the link as well in the description. What about this jumper? I went into pretty good details when I was talking about this, but I would like to give some more um, flair here if you want to make this for your own. So first of all, the uh, construction is, I say classic petit knits, but I've only knitted a couple of those. Uh, so you start from the back part of the yoke, you knit up, then a front piece, you join in the round, and then from that point is knitted in the round. Pick up for the sleeves in the round, that's basically it. I choose this pattern uh, originally because it was actually knitted in the round. I really, really, really wanted a Naran style jumper, like the classic Irish jumper, and I wanted it to celebrate St. Patrick's Day this year, which was a couple of weeks ago. I didn't quite manage to finish it. And I wanted a Naran jumper knitted in the round. 
but I've tried iron jumpers uh, or cable sweaters for a long time and never been able to make any. So not to risk it, I went with a trial, very cheap yarns, and then second iteration, lovely, gorgeous yarn. Is it lovely and gorgeous? It is lovely and gorgeous. It doesn't itch that much. The first time I put it on, I was super itchy and it was just I couldn't I couldn't keep it on and relax and feel cozy because the sunless garden fear gint is woolly wool, is proper actual wool. I can't hear, describe it to you well, has a tooth on it. The fibers in the yarn have a lot of scales, so it tends to be quite itchy. If you're sensitive to wool though, because I think if you're not sensitive to wool, this may be completely fine and soft. I'm seeing everything around the internet, so if you're like me, can't have wool, especially around your neck and your arm, this is itchy. But now that I'm wearing this for recording, doesn't feel that um, scratchy as uh, I remembered it. Anyway, it's a lovely on the skin, I can say that now. It's uh, a little tough to knit with. It's a little too kind of tooty once again. This is probably because I didn't knit with the right needle suggested by the yarn label. I think the yarn label recommend a 3.5, no, recommend a 4 and 4.5 needle. Because I couldn't get the right gauge, I really went down on needle size. I find myself being a sort of a loose knitter um, these days. So. Knitting with those small needles, this is a very lofty DK yarn. I use a 2.5 for the ribbing and a 3mm for the body. It was quite tough on my hands. Um, at the point that at the very end I couldn't really do more than a couple of rounds before just dropping it. I couldn't do that. The Second thing that it was really astonishing to me is the amount of yarn that this jumper uses. I know the 50 gram balls 90 meters, but this entire sweater, and I have knitted the second size, if you have the pattern you know what I'm talking about, I have used 15 balls of yarn, which is absolutely crazy. It's uh, a lot of yarn. I was basically starting a new ball every other hour <laughs> when I was knitting. Never happened something like that. Which is great for a distaching point of view. It's not so great because when I bought my 12 ball of yarns, I was sure I could have made this one and probably some small projects, but I had to order a few more. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, this is just to say how. Uh, Pergint is so lofty that it doesn't really run for long. The next piece is washing. Now, if you have used Pergint before, give me some suggestions here. I washed this jumper, I don't know, five times, six probably. The first round of washing, it was just disgusting. I put it in the bucket with some eucalyptus, I think, and uh, I left it there for half an hour, an hour, I don't remember. And the water came out pitch black, really, really dirty and greasy. So I was like, okay, let's give it another wash. And so on and so forth for about five times. After which I was like, okay, let's uh, just uh, call it a day and uh, try to block it. I really want to get this jumper done for the podcast that was meant to film last week, but I couldn't because I didn't have it finished. Block it and the stink of the yarn was just crazy. I mean, I grew up in a farm. I love the smell of sheep and cows and uh, the farming smell, but... The smell that came from this yarn was just stinking the entire place up. I don't know what was the deal with the yarn. 
Have you experienced this before when using Sunless Garn or did I do something wrong with washing? What's going on there? So I couldn't stand it. I put it outside to try and dry, but we are in Ireland too. It doesn't dry much. So I decided to wash it again and we are on the sixth wash. And this time I used a lot of uh, hair conditioner. Hair conditioner is really smelly, uh, really perfumed. I use some brand from Garnier, the one with the uh, green label, just because I like the smell. And um, yeah, the water came out black once more. I'm not talking about uh, dirty water like uh, I don't know, I can say when you wash a um, host garden wool um, fabric, it comes out quite greasy. This was actually black water. <laughs> Disgusting. So I went on, wash it again. The smell came out, uh, the yarn feels uh, an awful lot softer. I think though, if I wash it once more, I will probably have more blackish stuff coming out of the yarn. I stopped it just because I had to dry it and film and yeah, that's it. But there's no smell coming out of the yarn anymore and last wash the water was quite clear. So a long story about uh, the washing of this jumper, but yeah, I was uh, incredulous <laughs> to see what was happening in the bucket, never seen something like that. And we said that. Would I use uh, Pergint again? Absolutely yes. In fact, I am going to place an order as soon as my paycheck uh, from work comes in, because I really want more of this color. It's absolutely gorgeous. Something that I did different um, from this first one, uh, if you remember, this first jumper had a folded collar. I did not do a folded collar here because the yarn is just very, very big and lofty. And I think a single collar with an Italian bind off works absolutely fine. And uh, yeah, now I can say I have an iron jumper or some sort of iron jumper that I really like very much. A lot of talking about this jumper and I'm looking at the clock because I have a meeting coming up and as well a barber appointment in half an hour and I feel like this podcast is all about my hair all the time. I should really film a hairstyle podcast rather than an eating podcast. Anyway, yeah, I'm running to the barber lunchtime, try to film this. Uh, get this uploaded on internet and work as well. Um, this may come out a little late though, but I really wanted to get it done because it's gonna be uh, Easter next week. And uh, yeah, I am going back home for Easter, uh, back uh, to Italy for us, uh, Easter week or what we call the Holy Week is uh, quite important. Although I have lost a lot of my uh, religious traditions since I live far from the family and here in Ireland is a little less, um, I don't know, uh, I don't think easy, but it's a little less um, permeated in the society as it is over there. Uh, every day of the week towards uh, um, Sunday uh, towards Easter, we do have some sort of celebrations. Um, Sunday is Palm Sunday and then you know what happens with the palms. Um, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday there's some celebrations that, um, yeah, like my family, I, I'm not going into everything because it's just crazy. You may think that, that I'm completely mad and out of time probably, but um, I don't have the chance to go back home too much and I always enjoyed the kind of magic of all these celebrations and uh, was it's a, it's a nice thing that this year I can go home and be part of this. Although I'm not a fanatic at all and uh, you know I don't want to talk about religion too much in this uh, in this channel it's personal it's something 
uh, of my own and uh, yeah anyway I'm going back home I will send you a couple of videos uh, about the Venetian countryside and the mountains I still think I think there's still uh, snow over there as well so maybe we can get in a, a skiing trip as well who knows next finish work now do not judge me for the state of this finish work but I have been using this non-stop and I'm talking about ta -da, a pair of slippers so if you follow this channel you know that I am um, kind of obsessed with the Sannesgarn felted slippers that uh, Inga from the Knitting Tradition talk about um, quite often as well. Uh, she um, basically infected me with this obsession for those slippers. They are really fun to knit. Gorgeous is a free pattern. It's in Norwegian, unfortunately, but um, Inga translated the pattern on um, her podcast, I think, 21st episode or something like that. Anyway, uh, it's a gorgeous pattern. I've been knitting them a lot. But I was looking for something different this time. Something that was more like a, a slipper. Slip on, ta 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 ta, walk around, little bit less yarn and uh, less wintry, if you wish. I couldn't really find anything online or anything that was free because by the life of me, half of these books that you see over there are knitting books. I can't buy more knitting books or knitting patterns, it's just crazy. I think if I knit all the patterns that I have here on my computer, my iPad, I probably will need a couple of lifetimes to knit everything. So I decided to come up with one. And uh, here it is. These are the so-called iron slippers by your faithful. I decided to call them iron because, um, you know, last year I was dedicating my pattern or the attempt of patterns to um, Venice and the uh, town that I'm from, our traditions over there. And this year as I'm celebrating, finally, becoming an Irish citizen, I would like to dedicate my patterns to Ireland. So we have a, a leafy hut uh, that has been published. A leafy is the river that crossed Dublin. Now we have iron slippers. So about these slippers here. I'm ashamed to point them to the camera because they are actually quite... Uh, uh, worn out. <laughs> anyway, these are felted slippers. So in the pattern I give you all the sizes for men and women. Um, you will knit up the slipper and realize that they are huge. Huge, huge, huge. But this is because I will take into account the shrinking due to felting. Let's start from the construction. The construction starts for, from the sole. Now, don't mind my sole here. You need up the sole. Without cutting the yarn, you will um, pick up stitches all around the sole and using a combination of German short rows on the back side and on the front side, you will knit up the entire body of the slipper or the instep of the slipper. Now, in the pattern, I recommend to knit two soles or to knit one sole in double knitting, just because I found that one layer is probably not enough to work on. So you would like to have a couple of layers of fabric so they become a little bit more comfortable. My floor here is extremely cold. It's um, sort of... Um, ceramic that looks like wood never shown you floor <laughs> never shown you my floor but yeah this to say it's, the ceramic is quite cold so walking on the floor is not great with one layer so i ended up knitting two layers and putting that into the pattern it's absolutely lovely to fell them how do i fell them 
Personally, I smudge them in uh, dishwasher, like a regular uh, dish soap, for a couple of minutes. I found that that breaks a little bit the carotene in the yarn and the, the, the fat, the oils in the yarn, and uh, allows for more clinging of the fibers together. And then I put them into the washing machine, uh, very short runs for a couple of times. When they are almost at the size that I like, probably a little on the smaller side, I just stretch them on my feet with a couple of pair of socks so they get to the right shape, put some newspaper inside and let dry. And they are always perfect. The soap thing is actually very good and my mom uh, used to do that um, with like a, a proper regular uh, body soap so she is the one that came up with this thing I don't know if it's a normal thing to use soap when felting I absolutely don't know anything about felting but here we go on the bottom here I use my glue gun and I swiggle a lot of glue uh, so they become uh, grippy and they don't sleep and find yourself uh, upside down I think they are lovely and I'm so happy that I could come up with this I don't have many many sizes but it starts from a men 39 all the way up to 46 and the women to 34 to 42 those are the sizes that I could test knit everything else. Although I had a couple of more sizes, um, I couldn't find any test meter. And uh, yeah, you know what? My last finish work it's a pair of iron slippers. I really hope you like them. You can find the pattern in my uh, rubbery shop or in uh, Lovecraft, but I'll put the link below as well. Now, a lot of talking. Let's talk about the works in progress. The first one that we need to address is this gorgeousness here. Look at the color, how beautiful they are. This is, of course, the Islander sweater and the pattern that I decided to use comes from Sunless Garn. It's uh, the most gorgeous sweater that I have ever needed, probably. I have done the body, one sleeve, and I have just started the uh, second sleeve. I am using this gorgeous yarn here. Um, let me grab two labels for the color as well. So, uh, this podcast is going to be terrible. These are the uh, colors. This is um, number 417, and this is... Number 464, um, it's Rauma Finul, former known as PT2, is a sport weight yarn that I bought from the same amazing French shop. It's a gorgeous dark, very warm brown and a mustard. These are not the color that I uh, use, usually I'm a greenish, grayish, bluish type of person and um, why did I decide? Once again, Inga from the Niti tradition, she's basically uh, getting me into trouble here. I'm basically into everything that she has done. She has done a slender sweater using this yarn and uh, yeah, I couldn't do anything different. I really love the colors and the combination of brown and yellow. I don't know if I will ever knit the, uh, not knit, wear that, but I find it beautiful. If anything else is an artwork. I did knit before a slender sweater that was uh, the, just the regular white and black one. I am not using that as much as I would because I was uh, a very inexperienced uh, jumper or garment knitter back then and there are a lot of errors. It's knitted in host garn, super soft, which is great. I should probably unravel it and knit it again. I don't know. Anyway, about this 
uh, sweater here. This is a pattern from Sunness, but you can find uh, Islander sweater from many other companies. I think Aroma itself has uh, a version of this sweater. Sunness gives two um, different options, male and female, and originally started with male body. Considering that I have knitted a lot of sunness patterns and I know how they work and I know the stitch count that works for me, I decided to go with my 260 rule, 260 stitches for the bottom, and find the size that was closer to that. It was massive really really massive so I went down to the first male size which was about 240 I'm not giving precise numbers here the pattern is for sale so and that uh, didn't work as well it was massive once more so the third iteration here is the smaller of the female version and this is still very big. So now, I don't know if I'm going completely bananas or if it is uh, Rauma as yarn that is so different in gauge. I should have swatched, you may say. Yeah, I should have swatched, but it is what it is. I don't mind if it's going to be oversized, if it's going to be big, just because Rauma as a yarn is once again really lofty, really <sighs> woolly. <laughs> is that even a way to describe a wool yarn? Anyway, it's a really gorgeous and I am so in love with the fabric that this creates. I can't get enough. It's like um, if you were knitting with Holstgarn after washing it. So his lofty plump is absolutely stunning and super, super easy to knit with, which is a plus. So the plan here is to retire this for a couple of weeks until I'm back to Ireland and uh, then finish it. It's just uh, a matter of finishing a sleeve and the yoke. The next work in progress that I have is just a teeny teeny tiny ribbon here. This is another garment, another jumper from Sun's Garn. I will put a picture somewhere here of uh, a model modeling the finished work. This is the Lerdal sweater. No idea how you pronounce. There is the A E letter, the A E together. If uh, you were speaking Latin, you would say E. Eh. So in this case, it's Lerdal. I don't know if Norwegian, as the pattern is Norwegian, read that the same way. Once again, I should have done some research. It's a simple uh, drop sleeve type of garment with a uh, yoke collar work. I wasn't really into it at all, <laughs> but I am thinking of a project to bring on my trips all the way uh, to Italy for um, Easter. And um, yeah, this is, this is it for the yarn that I'm using. I am using this yarn here. This is of yarn. This is Navia Duo. It's a fingering weight yarn and the specs here are 50 grams by 50. The thing that you just heard is my alarm. I, after the disaster that happened last year, I installed sort of a perimetral, perimetral alarm. So anybody that is passing by uh, it's picked up by that. You didn't need to know that. Anyway, um, this is a lovely yarn that comes from... No idea. They say though, in, on the label, 
and it's the first time that I read the label. There is Faroe wool, Shetland wool, and Australian lamb wool. I definitely should switch off my phone. Don't even know if you heard that, but it's uh, a lovely, lovely yarn. I got this on um, Hobby, um, a Danish website, and it was quite uh, on the cheap side. It's uh, similar to raw mafinol, but it's a little bit more uh, hard, probably, to need to with. Um, I don't mind that. It's like a fingery way yarn. I'm doing a jumper that I know how it's gonna fit. Um, even if it takes a little bit of work, who cares? And of course, the colors are my usual. This was it, I think, for works in progress. I have one more that I will show you now and you'll be super surprised. Ta -da! You can't tell much uh, what this thing is. So this is a crochet project and um, I kind of have an idea, but let's talk about the project itself. This is a new technique to me. I have to admit I'm not a crocheter at all, um, but I was kind of uh, browsing new techniques, new styles that were not familiar to me and I came upon a video that was called some sort of uh, Tunisian stuff and uh, I start watching it it's in English which was great and uh, yeah they were showing the technique for this thing here that later I understood is called entrelac entrelac it's basically mini squares that look like they are woven on the side and knitted on the other, but they are crocheted. Ba -bang. It's a lovely technique, uh, quite easy to get used to, and then it becomes really addictive. So for now I use the end of uh, the little ball of Pergint the Anity Jumpering for the center. And I'm going on with this tweedy yarn. This is from Drops. Don't like this, so I was never going to use it. I have like five balls of this. So this may become sort of a scrappy blanket thingy. I just need to figure out how much yarn I will need to make a blanket and then you see it grows as a star type of thing so I need to figure out as well how to make it uh, square or rectangular but it's, uh, it's a great little project you basically start from one square in the middle and then you work all your way around around uh, and uh, yeah it's great the only thing is just the amount of mess on the back that you need to weave in at the end I will get to that as well. So that was it for this video. Now I'm quite late to my uh, barber appointment so I will leave you here. One thing I would like to mention is another lovely podcast that I came across this week. It's an Irish podcast and uh, I am not acquainted with the many Irish podcasts, which is uh, not ideal. <laughs> so I was just looking for a knitting podcast and I came across this lovely lady called Anya. And her podcast is called... Uh, it's called Freak Knit... Freak? Freak? <laughs> My Irish is awful. I will put the link below as well so you can have a look. She comes from the other side of Ireland. She's 100% Irish. So if you want a good uh, Irish accent, pop over. Um, she's very inspiring. Uh, the podcast is really calming. She shows beautiful uh, videos and pictures of uh, uh, the west of Ireland. It's... Uh, just a very very nice positive energy type of podcast and um, yeah 
I want to thank Onya so much for bringing some positive energy into my living room in this case <laughs> and uh, yeah go on and check her out let her know that I sent you there and uh, say hi that's it I will keep you updated with my uh, Easter not a holiday because I will be working from there but it's a Easter break type of thing so stay tuned and once again I hope you enjoyed and if you did please consider to give me a subscribe, a like or uh, say hi in the comments. I will see you in a couple of weeks. Bye bye.